Well, hello, hello there, my friends, and welcome back to Shenanigans 3, 2, 1. As you can see, we are in the kitchen today doing something a little bit different. Not going to do the Timu haul, although that is one of the products I got from the collaboration I just did with Ashton's Beauty. If you have not already seen the video, please go and check it out. Like and subscribe if you like our content. Um, and what are we doing today? Hmm looks like something healthy and that it is and beans yes we're gonna cheat and go the quick route but once I actually start video uh, taping how I do my ham hock I guess you could say ham and bean soup uh, Jay is under the weather and I gotta take care of my boo you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so with that being said, I just wanted to go over the ingredients before we get started. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. I am going to have this all cut up and diced. We are cheating a little bit, uh, but if you have leftover ham from the holidays, ham bones, we're going to use those, which is why instead of getting the pre-packaged ham cubes, I get those for like salads and things of that nature. But the fact that it has the bone in it, this is a ham steak with the bone in and I'm gonna cut it up and I am gonna keep all that fat. In fact, when I look at these and purchase them at the store, I try to get as much fat on them as possible. Why? You guys know, fat has the flavor. We got some water over here. We've got ham hocks. So I just took these out. I am going to throw those in, of course, with the ham steak. We got some butter. I have milk in the fridge that's also going to go in this. This is going to be for a roux to thicken your soup. Um, a lot of people do it. I don't really do it that often. I'm going to show you other ways I cheat to thicken the soup. I don't want it too thick because, again, he's sick. I'm still recovering. It still hurts when I swallow. But regardless, this is a meal in a bowl. It's a very hearty soup. I have some fresh, like, grated minced garlic. And, again, I uh, will go over... Most of the measurements, although I seldom ever measure when we make it, um, I will tell you now, this is five garlic cloves, freshly. You can mince them if you like it finer. You can see I got some very, very thin pieces. I do like it dissolving in the broth. I've got some carrots that I just diced up. That is as probably the biggest piece. Um, and again, I just like normally bigger pieces but because again the struggle to swallow hurts they'll soften up anyway i have three so this here is actually three carrots peeled cubed and this is three medium to large sized i'm doing the russet potatoes today this is two and a half stalks of celery again your cube pieces we have half a very large onion so i would uh go to your taste of course but it was a really big onion um, I believe that's about a half a cup if you want it down to that these cups I believe are a cup each so it's about a half a cup of uh, chopped minced onion um, that was like I said two and a half almost three celery stalks I don't like the celery as much I use it more for the flavoring so I cut those a lot smaller than I do normally the carrots we got flour, of course, not measured out. I believe that's a cup, but when we make the roux, I eyeball it. It's supposed to be equal parts fat, which could be butter, bacon, grease, which actually is going to be used in the roux as well, since we're already using the ham and pork products for this soup. And chicken broth. Now, I cheat, and I use the Swanson chicken broth. And I will tell you that this is what I had on hand, but I do recommend using the low sodium because your ham your bacon grease, if you do it like I do, already is pretty salty. And your great northern beans. For this recipe, you could use uh, half to the whole bag. And this is a 16 ounce bag, just your white bean. You can use any white bean. You can use a cannelli, uh, the northern, um, you get it, white kidney beans, whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. But with that being said, I also have two bay leaves. Now I do prefer the fresh bay leaves. I don't have any, so I'm using on what I have on hand. Some black pepper to taste. And salt. This we are going to hold off on. Usually I use a kosher salt. Again, what I have on hand. 
I do have the grinder for it, but I probably will omit this. I want to taste it before I season it. Again, the ham is salty. And again, we are going to cheat. So I will be using the three cans. Um, I'm going to be using a combination of the two Great Northern and the Canelli, and I do keep the juice. And again, the butter and flour is going to be for the roux, as will the milk when I take it out of the fridge, as will the bacon grease. And uh, before I come back, I am going to go ahead and start cubing these into bite-sized pieces. And I will be back, my friends. Okay, you guys are back here with me. Welcome back to Shenanigans 321. Do not mind the way I look. I uh, fell asleep with my makeup on last night. It's my day off. And I was not really concerned about how I look today because I didn't anticipate doing this video, but here we are. And uh, we are continuing on with our bean and ham, basically, soup. So it's just a white bean soup. I have my pot um, on the stove, and right now it is on medium-high. I'm just heating up the pot. And uh, basically what I'm going to do for about 30 to 45 minutes is I am just going to get these ham hocks that I had, okay? They are room temperature, and these are great for flavoring, especially with the bone-in, because uh, once they cook down, they're going to kind of disintegrate going to get all that num nums and yummy yunami flavor from the bones inside the soup. Hopefully you can hear and see me okay. Jay is sleeping in the other room and he's sick, which is why we are doing it this way. And this is going to be dinner for him today. So again, I did cheat and I am using one and a half of these to start. Um, I do have another one I'll be using. Of course, use your own chicken broth if you want. Now, I do wish, as I stated before, I wish this was unsalted. So I really, really am going to hold off on any salt, anything I'm putting in here, because the ham already has salt in it, okay? Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do, forgive me, I forgot to put my uh, dang mammoth. Oh, I forgot my bacon grease. Where are you? Did I use it all? I think I might have. Oh, there it is. Hiding. Hold up. I should have taken it out. I apologize. Get with it, Shannon. Get with it. So, yes, I'm wearing my old scrubs because they are super, super comfortable. Now, obviously, I don't have a whole lot of uh, leftover baking grease. Don't really eat a lot of pork, uh, not lately, but I am going to utilize what I have here. I'm going to just, it's just for additional flavoring, just to kind of flavor the broth a little more. Now, what I should have done is put this in the microwave for 30 seconds, but... Maybe I will still. I'm going to use my fingers. Put a little bit of that in there. There's my rag. I don't know why I did that. Broke. All right. My pot holder's out. that I have again the chicken broth and this is oh wait no I'm stuck first I'm gonna add some water just to cool down the pan and this is four cups of water so I'm gonna put half in yep so two two cups of water and again, that is just because my pan was getting too hot. And over here, I believe I have six cups of chicken broth. I'm going to add that as well. Sorry, it was four cups. So I added, added, I added a total of 
six cups of liquid, two cups of water to four cups of chicken broth. So I still have it on medium high. I want that to get to a rolling boil, so I'm putting it up too high. Over here, I do like using fresh basil, basil, sorry, bay leaves. I cannot talk. I don't know what the hell's going on with me lately. But over here I have two, they're the dried bay leaves. Now it's really important to replace these every three months. I cannot specify that among, uh, enough. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know what the hell's going on with me today. I slept all right last night. But to that, we have two bay, bay leaves. Clean as I go, rinse that out. Bada bing, bada boom. And we're not going to use this. If you have time, which I don't, because he's going to be getting up in a little bit. Um, this could take about an hour and a half, two hours till it gets to where I want it. But if you have like four to six hours, I do recommend using the dry beans. We're going to cheat. We're not doing that today. You bring this up to a boil. Into this I'm going to add pepper. Now I do go heavier on the pepper because I like it with a little kick. Jay not so much. I would probably double or triple that but when this is all said and done I'll add the pepper to my individual bowl. And that was a tablespoon of crushed black I should have used the grinder, but it's really hard to measure. And I'm kind of just whisking through this. Bear with me. Again, getting my seasonings in. I'm going to go ahead and put my fresh garlic in there as well. And again, that is four cloves, give or take four. Give that a little stir. I know I look like Dookie. Dookie dookie. Dookie shit. Get in there. And again, if there's something, if you're not crazy about fresh garlic, you don't like onions, you don't like carrots or celery, don't use them. The choice is yours. This one. Still waiting for that to come to a rapid boil. starting to come up and I should be bringing the camera over here but obviously it's not really at a boil it doesn't matter but I'm just telling you you do want it to come to a rapid boil and then you will have it the ham hocks again going for 30 to 40 30 to 45 minutes and I really wish this whole telescope I'm sorry I'm moving around so much but I wish that it was um, taller and that's as tall as it goes. Telescope. I'm, I don't know what is wrong with me today. I'm sober. <laughs> I slept well. I just, I cannot talk. I cannot talk. So. I'm going to go ahead and add the DM hops in. And typically, again, I let those go. 30, 45 minutes. So I'm going to hold on to this. So, the ham is already cooked. Um, you can go ahead if you want to kind of get it toasty or put some color on it and caramelize it in like a cast iron skillet or whatever, but it's already done. Oh, I'm going to throw this bone in here again. This is the bone in hand steak. And throw that in there with the hops. And then we have, you know, just your fattest flavor. So I did keep the fat. You can omit it if you want. But, uh, yeah, leftover ham from the holidays, whatever, that's always good, too. So because this is already cooked, I'm going to go ahead and let the ham hocks go. Um, once they reach that rapid boil, I'll turn it down to, like, a medium high. And then at that point, I will come in and add the other ingredients. So we shall return. I'll be right back. Bye. All right, all right, are we recording again? 
We are. So, um, actually, forgot something. So, I am back. Um, I recommend good uh, country bread, like a French bread, a briquette. I had uh, the sourdough that we got from a local bakery where they make it fresh every day. And it is absolutely, hands down, my favorite. Amazing. Uh, if you're really hungry, get a little side salad, which is still in the crusty bread and the soup for dinner. And uh, let me bring you over here with me. Um, I did uh, fast forward, of course. So I let it go for 50 minutes. And then, of course, it is down. I did have to get a second pot. Ooh, steaming up the camera because uh, it was overflowing. Um, once, of course, you take the ham hocks out and kind of take the meat off them, uh, you'll have more room in the pot. But you know what? That is okay with me. And I'm just going to kind of seep it. I'm going to actually put a uh, wooden spoon in there because I don't want it completely covered. But as you can see, I went ahead and I added the carrots, the onions, and the celery. And I do like my vegetables. I don't like them like disintegrated completely soft. I like a little bit of texture in my soup. So I'll do them al dente, but the potatoes um, had to go in there. And that was after that 40 minute mark. And you'll just cook those down until they are fork tender. What I forgot to tell you is one of my secret ingredients. Uh, some of you know I used to live in Puerto Rico for a little while, years ago. And I fell in love with Goya. And they have so many seasonings. A lot of time you have to go to an international market. Sometimes Walmart will carry it or a Latin uh, kitchen uh, convenience store, depending on where you live. But this is himo, basically, ham flavoring. And uh, what it has is it basically provides, as it says, the flavor of a quarter pound of smoked country ham and pack it to your favorite recipes where ham flavor is desirable, such as beans, soups, stews, rice dishes, scrambled eggs, vegetables, and especially to sofrito which I don't do. Love you. Love you and um, yeah, so what you do, this is going to add, even though you got the ham hock in there, even you, though you have your ham steak or your leftover ham from the holidays, this adds a little bit more of that smoky flavor. I know people that put bacon in their soup. I actually am not a fan. I love bacon, don't get me wrong, but I don't like it in there. And of course, the very last thing that we will add is the beans. Again, use, you know, um, the Great Northern. If you're cooking this all day, again, I do recommend the dried beans. It just takes a lot longer to cook. And because Jay, as sick as he is, and the workaholic he is, he is still going to uh, go ref his soccer games. Um, so, again, yeah, that is a lot going on over here with the two pots. However, um, for those of you that know me or have uh, been on my channel, uh, you know that I do some community work. I live uh, very close to a senior community. A lot of them are widowed or divorced or just lonely or their kids live far away. So I do kind of my own version of Meals on Wheels. And this is perfect because they do love their soups. Um, I've made, <laughs> soup is kind of my thing. I uh, Probably one of my specialties are my soups. And um, whether it's a chowder or stew, casseroles, that's kind of my nick. But, um, yeah, I get those disposable um, Tupperware or, you know, like Karen who lives next door to me. I'll say, hey, girl, hey, I need this back. <laughs> give me my Tupperware back. Or I'll go knock on the door if they're home and ask them to give me their own bowls. Um, I've got the new neighbors that recently moved across the street, a family of four. We got Creed again. Uh, videos I had before. He's five. His little sister Jade is two. They call me grandma. Grandma's got to make the healthy stuff, right? So um, I'll have plenty because this is way, way too much for Jay and I to um, eat, even though I'm home for three days. Um, it's a lot. And it does freeze well. You can can it. Um, the shelf life on this stuff, if you can it right, it's like a year and a half. i want to get into that it's on my bucket list but i haven't had the time so for now we're just going to give it away to the neighbors we'll keep um he'll probably eat a bowl i'll eat like half a bowl 
and uh, can have it for the rest of the week. I can take some to work with me, although I don't like taking soup on my work trips. It's a pain in the arse. I've had them spill when the lids weren't secured and TSA kind of messing with them, but we'll see. Either way, it's going to go to a good cause, whether it's in the freezer for another day, in our bellies, or the neighbor's bellies. So uh, with that, um, again, I already passed 40 minute mark. I put my vegetables in and they just need maybe another hour. And then I will go in and put the beans in. Obviously, I'm using the canned beans so they are cooked through and really it'll heat up pretty much instantly in the pot. But um, I'll probably let it go for another half hour. Of course, with the magic of time, you guys will be back before that's done. And I will just divide this into the two. Again, I, I didn't have, you can use all great northern, mix it up, do you boo, do what you want. Um, but yeah, I got the three cans. I believe there were 15 ounces or, uh, yeah, 15.5 ounces each. So yeah, if you want more ham or ham flavoring, if you want, obviously, more vegetables or thicker cut, do it the way you want. I am just giving you the basic ingredients. And once I see and taste it, um, I'll see if it needs any other seasoning, any more salt or pepper. Um, I saw somebody when I was kind of just researching other people's uh, soup recipes, then do like a slurry or a roux, uh, either cornstarch and water. They'll add the thick in it. Um, I like mine a little bit thicker, but I love the broth. I might try that, hence the um, butter and flour mixture. I have cornstarch, but um, what I normally do is I'll mash up some of the beans and potatoes, and that is a natural thickening agent without adding the extra. So we'll see. I'll play it by ear and see how it comes out, but we'll be back. Lickety split for you, not so much for me. Bye. I'll be back. All right, you guys, we are back, and where's my pot holders over here? Uh, the soup is pretty much done. I went ahead and add uh, the Canelli and Great Northern beans. I feel like crap. I really just want to look good when I'm on camera, but you know what? Real life, real life. So over here I have, uh, I'm going to do the roux because I am going to try it. Now what I decided to do is I'm going to try it on one pot and one pot, the more soupier broth and the other one, the thickened broth. So we're going to go ahead and make the roux. This is the first time I've actually done a roux. Um, what I normally do, let me turn this off in the back. All right, all right, there we go. Let me turn that down, turn that down. Um, what I normally do, let me show you. I forgot to pull it out because I'm just not myself. But um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use a masher, and again, I've got the potatoes in there, which are really starchy. So they are already going to release like some starches which will thicken up your broth a little bit and you just go in and it's going to be hard but you get it it's uh got a piece of ham in there but it's potato masher and i just go in and mash it like that or or do it the right way we've come this far let's just finish it off strong shannon let me get one of my um Soup strainer, where the hell is everything you need? All right, here we go. Little Timu, little soup. So it's uh, gonna let me release some of the liquids. So I'm just gonna scoop out some of the beans. It doesn't matter if there's like potatoes or whatever in there. You go in like this, right? I'm gonna put the fork over here. So yeah, it's got the potatoes, it's got the ham and carrots in it. And you just mash it with a fork. You mash it, mash it, mash it. Try to get it as pasty as possible. Once again, you're mashing, focusing on the beans and the potatoes. And as you can see, it's already forming almost like a paste. And that is a natural thickening agent for your soups, for your uh, stews, whatnot. And uh, it's because of all the starches in those beans potatoes um obviously keep going at it we're just gonna hurry up here jay went to go get his hair cut before he goes to his game he really needed it he's starting to look like wolverine he doesn't like it i mean i'm loving playing around but he's really thin on the top and um his hair just grows out like this so it's thin here and it just comes out kind of like the bows of the clown 
Not that it looks like Bows of the Clown, but yeah, you just kind of mash that up a little bit. Um, I probably should have done better. Let me just do it. And pulled you over. I'm trying. I am terrified. I am going to drop the camera into the soup. And let me turn this down to a simmer because it is actually already cooked through. But that'll thicken that up a little bit. So that's going to be the one that's more on the thinner side. And of course, um, I'll be going through your ham hocks. This might not. I will, uh, sorry, can you see that? I can't see, obviously, the way I'm holding the camera. But I'll go through and take these ham hocks. I need my uh, stronger metal utensils, not the wood ones. But I'll pull these out, okay? I'll let them cool, and I'll shred the meat on that. But, yeah, bear with me, bear with me. Can you see the saucepan? So I've got it on. I don't want to get you guys dizzy. I am horrible at recording on a low, and I just got the pan hot. I really need to up the grade to be more professional. Three tablespoons of butter is going in my saucepan. Get your trusty whisk. I couldn't find my small one. I don't know what the heck is going on. Actually, uh, I got the metal one. I just don't like using the metal on my good pots. Oh, I found it. Perfect. So I got my rubber, I've got a metal, I've got a wooden. And we're just going to melt that butter down. You don't, I mean, to each their own. I don't like it to brown. I just like it melted. And you're going to add equal parts fat to equal parts flour. And um, because just uh, whole milk, I usually use the almond milk or coconut milk, like in, if I have a bowl of cereal or something. So this is typically for my coffee or things such as this. I don't buy it in bulk because it'll just go bad. Your butter is all melted already. And what you want to do, so that was three tablespoons, you want to add your equal parts flour to your liquid or fat. So, um... Again, you can do a slurry, which is like cornstarch to water. This is um, more of a roux, which is your butter to flour fat. So with three tablespoons, we're going to do three tablespoons of flour. So that's one, two, three. Okay. Okay, okay. Started doing the dishes. i got to finish them off. All right, so while that's going, I'm turn the heat up a little bit, and I am just going to whisk that in. Obviously, you want it kind of like a pancake batter texture. You want to make sure all the flour is cooked out, and it will thicken as it goes. And, of course, as I stated, um, you can add it gradually. So, you know... Soup is one of those things, I think, like a casserole that's just kind of better the next day. Like, I love eggplant parmesan or lasagna the day after. I mean, it's good when it comes out of the oven, it's hot, but I don't know. I just think it kind of, the texture's better. I think the taste kind of soak it and marinate more. So there's some foods I just really like better the next day. So uh, you want to make sure you continue mixing, getting any pieces of flour you might have on the bottom of your saucepan. And it'll thicken as it goes. And I will go ahead and bring the camera over here for you once again so you can see. You know, there's a couple things I wanted to do as a career when I was younger. And I was like, I want my own food network channel. Of course, I never went to culinary school or anything like that. But, uh, I mean, I'm all right in the kitchen. I'm not like the best chef in the world, but... I, I do all right. I mean, a lot of people like my food, so I like my food. Jay Rat, really, when I first started dating, he didn't like it because he was just a very simple hot dog, hamburger, pizza, fast food kind of guy. And I would make these casseroles, and um, he's like, oh, I can't eat this. Or, you know, he doesn't like the texture of meats. He doesn't like having to chew. He likes soft foods. kind of weird. But um, 
He's kind of gotten a little bit better with it. You know, like, he'd rather have, like, a pulled pork or sloppy joe as opposed to a steak. Like, are you out of your rabbit ass mind? You mean a steak and potatoes, man. But, um, yeah, this is pretty much cooked through. It only takes three to six minutes, I'd say, on average. And if you let the butter go too long, of course, it'll brown. And that's not a bad thing, but we're going to turn this off. I'm going to turn it off in the back as well. And it'll take a couple minutes once you do add it to your broth or soup or stew for it to thicken. Um, so be patient. And again, I still like it kind of soupy. So it, it's not going to be like a texture, let me give this a stir, of, um, you know, like a chowder or anything. It's still going to have some brothiness to it. It's just going to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this here. I'm going to pull the soup from the back burner up. Now the milk was just in case I had too much um, flour. And actually, you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with that, guys. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. Sorry. Um, I don't really typically measure. I am not used to measuring. I kind of eyeball things and I'm just... You know, I mean, I've been cooking for a while, so I pretty much know I just added half a teaspoon more of the um, flour. And the burner should still be hot enough, and it is. But yeah, it was that, um, the roux was too, too um, liquidy. You know, it's supposed to be a thickening agent, not a flavoring. So I'm just cooking down the flour on this, and this is coming up to be better. And again, I just went in and added a, I must have had a slab of the butter that I threw in there that was more than a teaspoon. Turn that back up. And this is more of a pancake batter. But I'm going to give it a little bit more heat, let it thicken up. And like I said, um, for those of you that are maybe just experimenting or learning how to cook, adjust the flavorings, adjust the salt and pepper. Um, this is perfect. I did taste it. Didn't need any salt at all. You can always add it later, but you can't take it out once it's in, obviously. If you do over salt, one of my favorite tricks is just throwing in a, a peeled potato, skinning it, peeling it, throwing it in there, and that'll pull out a lot of the excess salt if you over salt, which is something I used to have a problem with, especially when I smoked um cigarettes because it kills your taste buds and i liked the food way saltier than most people just see actually i think it even needs a little bit more flour so i'm going to add maybe a quarter of a teaspoon again i am so used to just seeing it there you go that's what i want right there that is it. Now we're coming along. Again, you want it more of a light pancake batter. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue stirring this and I'll be right back. And was it even recording? Okay, it was, I was worried about that. Okay, you guys, I um, just wanted to show you if you could see how it's more like a pancake batter. Can you see that? So it was too thin before. And again, you don't want it super thick, but that is your roux. And I am not going to use all of it. I'm going to gradually add it to my soup. And this is great, like, as a base if you're making biscuits and gravy. One of my all-time favorites. But there you have it. Pull my soup back up. This is still kind of going away. It's done. I'm going to turn that off. All right, so let me come in and show you, actually, um, the soup consistency before I have that. But you know what? I just realized I still got to take out the ham hocks. So, yeah, you see it's really brothy, and I don't want it much thicker than that. But um, as stated, I need to come back first. Um, I'm going to take out the ham hocks. I'm just going to get those. Take those out. I'm going to let them cool down. And 
um, then I'm going to shred them. And I do keep the bone, just so you know, I keep the bone in there. I can take out that bay leaf as well. And I'm going to show you the two side by side, the one that I kind of uh, just mashed up the potato and the um, uh, beans. So I'm going to let that cool before I shred it. That is your brothier soup. And that is your thicker one. You can actually see a little bit of the difference in the colors. All right, guys, let me let this cool. It is so worth the work, let me tell you that. I'm going to turn this down, and we'll be back. I'll be back. All right, guys, we are back for the final, final steps. Let me put my heat back up in that. So as you can see, now I'm recording, babe. Sorry. No, you're fine. I apologize. Um, I went ahead and took the ham hock and uh, put the bone back in there again as it continues. I mean, it's cooked but just for the additional flavoring. And I'll just show you on this one, I have it taken to. I just go around, obviously, like so. It gets a little more gelatinous, I guess you could say a good word, the closer you get to the bone. Then obviously it's okay if you leave some on there. Of course you got like the knuckles. You put that one in over there. And then I just go in, bite-sized pieces. But, I'm going to chop this up real quick before I add this back into the stock. I'm going to go ahead and do the slurry, which is why I put the heat back up so that uh, when you add your thickening agent, it'll take a bit better. Pieces like that, Jay will not touch, so I take that like cartilage piece out. I don't mind it, I like the texture, so I just got myself. Yeah, that I do. If that piece he's not going to eat, he'll pull it out. He is so picky. He's all about the visual, like, see that? I love it. He has gotten a lot braver, braver since I met him. I will give him that. I mean, he's done zip lines, but even his, uh, he'll venture out and try something at least. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth. Just and don't then, care to die anymore. Not die anymore since I met you. Yeah, you don't care anymore about time since you met me. What a guy. <laughs> you, know, you got options. Just like I can lose weight, I can lose about 186 pounds right now. Drop your ass. Wow. <laughs> Honey, I'm working on being a comedian. Sorry. Oh, are you? Me? Well, uh, don't quit your job. Yeah. You need a lot more work. I'll teach you, though. It's going to cost you. All right, so, yeah, there you go. It's all do half. In half, and I just totally messed up because he is a distraction sinner. So what I wanted to do was do the slurry first, but yeah. I've got his soup cooling off because he doesn't like it hot like I do. I mean, I, I want it to the point where I can barely taste the soup because my mouth is on fire. Same with my bath water. Now, get this all the way. And I can use a... Uh, regular spoon for this. This is done. Like I said, this one's done. This is the soupier one, which is, uh, I mean, not the soupier one. That's one that's got a little bit of thickness to it that I gave to him. So to heat up on this, use my paddle. And again, I've got the um, root. So actually we're going with this. And bring that up to a boil. and it will thicken as it goes. So I just want to add a little bit at a time. Again, I don't want the broth to be like a gravy. I just want it to have a little bit more of a creamier texture. And so again, I'm not measuring, I am just slathering my whisk and I believe that's gonna do. And then of course, if it's too thick, then I can just add more broth. You know? 
and it is actually taken pretty good. My stove heats up pretty quick. I'm gonna pull it down. And uh, come over here and show you. Frothy, thicker. You can see it coat in the back of the spoon. Again, as it heats up, it's still going to thicken a little bit more versus it just trickling really fast like water in that. Hopefully you guys can see the visual because, again, I can't. All right, and uh, here's your finished product. Again, for me, this is obviously to pay, but for me, I would um, add some crushed pepper. Let's see. Look at that. Got your chunks of ham, potatoes, the onions and garlic disintegrated, carrots. And we'll see what he thinks. He loves all my soups though. So, oh. I'm stirring this, getting creamier with that, you guys. Thank you so much for being here at Shenanigans. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hope you like the, uh, Video, again, uh, if you're here, typically for the Timu Halls, thank you for your time. Um, make sure you check out the last collaboration I did with Ashen's Beauty. She should be posting hers sometime this week. Hopefully mine will be on tonight or tomorrow. With that, take care of yourselves, and I will be back as soon as I can with another recipe for you. Simple, probably crock pot pot roast is what I've been craving this week. So take care of each other. Be kind. Love each other. Be good. Repent. Bye, guys.